as a young child, Edwina Adams was quiet by nature. She would whisper when speaking. In boot camp, she was thrashed for not yelling loud enough. But when she discovered her ex-husband was a con man, she started to make noise, proving you don't have to be loud to make some noise. Now Edwina's on a mission to motivate so kick back and tune in for candid conversations with those who have harnessed the power of their voices. Let's make some noise. Welcome to Let's Make Some Noise. This is where we take adversity and we turn it into positive noise. And I'm going to tell you what, I this is going to be a solo recording because I have so much to say and more and more people are coming to find the podcast. And I want to make sure you know why this podcast exists and how it even got started. See, I didn't talk about my past and my adversity for 16 years. And I first started talking about it and it was uh, about April, 2023. And I had this prompting to just be vulnerable and share about how my first husband, uh, my ex, he's an ex-husband, but my first husband ended up being a con man. And when I say con man, I don't mean like just a liar and a cheater, which he was those things, but the deceit was so much more than that. I'm going to refer to him as Danny deceit. So Danny deceit really played a head game on me, right? Especially when more and more stuff started coming to light. I was just like, oh my gosh, how, how dumb am I that I fell for this and that I didn't see this sign or that sign. And it was really quite a journey coming out of that because I had been um, very independent, very confident. And I thought, oh, maybe I'm not all of those things, right? Well, now I know that's not true. I am confident. I am independent. And I, I was even with him, but that's what con men do. Con men stands for confidence man. They attach themselves to confident people because they like to extract their confidence and they become confident. So when they're attached to confident, legitimate people, they look good. Does that make sense? If they attach themselves to weak people who weren't confident, then they wouldn't be matched in the level of confidence that they're wanting to exude, if that makes sense. So if you have found yourself in this situation, I get it. You are not dumb. You are not um, stupid by any means. And you can get through this. So when I started the podcast, it was kind of a, a double meaning. It was my time to make noise. But see, I'm not a angry middle-aged woman. And I didn't want to start showing up in the world as that. So noise is my acronym for a narrative of inspiration, strength, and encouragement. So when I say, let's make noise, let's turn our adversity, our pain, our suffering into something positive, into noise, narratives of inspiration, strength, and encouragement. I truly, truly believe that adversity is your greatest asset. And if you're in the middle of adversity and you're like, this sucks, and why the heck would I want this happening? Why are you telling me this is a good thing? First of all, if you're in the middle of it, it's okay to grieve. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be hurt. But don't stay there. Do not stay there. Find podcasts like these. Find people like me. And surround yourself with goodness in life. Okay? When you experience trauma, you need to experience the opposite of that to know in your heart that it's going to be okay. And then this amazing thing is going to happen and you're going to be filled with these ideas of, oh my gosh, I have learned so much. And now I want to share. I want to share this with the world. Now, that's a big part of what I do now. I hopefully inspire people <clears throat> by sharing my journey, sharing my story, having guests on the podcast that share their adversity and their noise. But I hope you're seeing that from me as well. And that's why I'm an adversity architect. <laughs> 
when I first started calling myself that, my um, my husband now, who's an awesome man, but he jokingly said, what does that mean, adversity architect? Are you like creating chaos? <laughs> and I said, no, but adversity is not a negative thing. See, adversity is our greatest asset. And we and I take that and I, I give people a blueprint so they can turn that into a business or a nonprofit or just something in their life that they can build and build upon that adversity. So adversity is good. We're going to use it. It sucks in the moment though. And that's okay. You can be mad. You can be angry. You could cry, but it's going to be good. I promise you. I learned about this vineyard and there was a guy that was touring the vineyard and the guy who managed the vineyard said, you know, we don't plant the vines in good soil. We actually plant the vines in clay. It's like the worst soil for vines. But the reason we do that is because the vines have to grow through the resistance. And it's hard for them to do that. But when they do, they're strong, flourishing vines that produce and give back. Do you hear that? The strong vines that produce, that make noise, had to go through the bad soil. They had to go through the resistance. I'm telling you, your adversity, it's going to do some good stuff for you and the world. And that doesn't mean you have to become a podcast host or a speaker or an author. It doesn't mean you have to do any of those things. It could be, you could, the noise you make could be so impactful to your kids, to your family, to your employees, to your neighbors. I've had this concept of making noise and really motivating people and encouraging them that adversity is their greatest asset. And I got so inspired because just yesterday I came across this uh, playwright. The playwright's name is Thornton Wilder. And here's what he said, without your wounds, where would your power be? (laughs) Where would your power be without your wounds? If you have wounds, You have power. You have power to make noise, to inspire, to encourage, to have a narrative of inspiration, strength, and encouragement for other people. And it will encourage you in your own life too. When you're doing that, that playwright went on to say, in love's service, only the wounded soldiers can serve. In love's service, only the wounded soldiers can serve. If you've been wounded, we got to get you healed. And oh my, what service you're going to be. So I hope this encouraged you today. (laughs) And like I said, I'm an adversity architect. So if you want to learn more about that, you can go to edwinaadams.com slash links, L-I-N-K-S. There's a tab at the top that... You can learn more about the adversity architect and what that means to work with me. But, oh man, it's so good. I'm so passionate about this and looking forward to chatting with whoever connects with me. And even if you don't do that, would you do me a favor? Please go to wherever you listen to this podcast and leave a review. Reviews are super hard to get. Um, I listen to podcasts and I know that I have to be given reminders to be like, oh yeah, I should, it would be nice to leave them a review because I really like this podcast. So if you really like this podcast (laughs) or even just this episode, go to that platform, leave a review. I read all of them and I really appreciate your time in doing that. So take care and make some noise.